Welcome back, everybody, to another exciting Lord Duckman production. I'm Lord Duckman himself. <laughs> well, we're back today with my 1968 Volkswagen Fastback, which everybody keeps asking, why don't I show it on videos? That's because typically I'm driving it, so you actually see it from behind the steering wheel at least once a month on our tech session videos, at minimum. But I also take it other cruises. Anyway, parking it after the last cruise, I pulled up on the e-brake handle, and it was a loud bang, and the thing just went limp in my hand. And yes, I'm still talking about the e-brake handle, but uh, when I looked a little more closely at the center console, I found this little gem. And if you don't know already, that's the e-brake cable, and it's the one for the right-hand side. This one, I just replaced it back in early 2020. Um, I don't know why it would have snapped so easily, because the one that's on the left-hand side I got in 1996, and it's been on two different vehicles. That's right. This cable that we're replacing today actually isn't your standard $9 cable. This is actually the uh, $40 cable uh, nowadays that you would find for the disc brake kit that's on here. So this is going to be a little different than what you'd see on a drum brake. In fact, the process is actually a lot easier to replace it, but we're going to demonstrate that right here on this video. So stay tuned, licky likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bellies to get updates every time I have a video. Check it out, she's done it for all my different social media links. And we'll be right back after that intro. Yeah. some wheel chocks or something to prevent this thing from rolling. That hubcap. I can't say that I've ever seen anybody else do it with my hand before like that. <laughs> it's loosening all of our lugs. Get it up high enough that you could easily get underneath it. You might remember a couple years ago we installed the disc brakes on this car. These are actually from a Beetle. They're a CB Performance Kit. Excellent, excellent kit. Links down below in the video description. It seems like everybody makes the same kit anymore. But what we're looking at here is the e-brake cable, and this is the loud bang that I heard because this is the little lever is what actuates the brake shoes that are on here, or pads I should say, and boy this thing has a lot of brake dust on it. But anyway, when the cable snapped, this thing snapped open, and you saw how far it ejected the cable, it actually threw it way out there. But this is the e-brake cable, I don't have to take a drum apart, I don't have to get up inside of this thing, I don't have to pull a retainer clip off the back side of it. I don't have to do any of the weird adjustment nonsense on the back side of this here because, well, it doesn't have any of that. It actually just pulls out right through here. Yeah, here's a little circ clip that's on here that I'm going to have to uh, evacuate. Once that's out of the way, the whole clip will pull right out. Yes, I put a jack stand under there, so don't bitch about it, right? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> the circ clip that's on here is pretty easy to get on or off with just a screwdriver. These don't usually tend to fly anywhere, although this would be the one time that they go launching. Now, look at that, see? Professionally extracted. Put that right in our hubcap so we don't lose it. There it is. All right, now that cable will pull right out of its little location. Unhook it from the lever, pull it out. And then it should come out of the chassis way up under there. And this is gonna be hard to get a good angle for you guys to see. I mean, it's pretty well lit, but you just can't really see it too well. All right, this cable here is the e-brake cable, and it goes into a hole in the chassis. So first, let's pull that cable out. Completely remove it. There's nothing to unscrew at the top, of course, and you know why? Because it blew up. So this should just actually pull right out of the chassis, the entire length of it. Now, I grease these things up. So when I pull it out, I gotta be careful I don't get it all over my body, I don't get it all over the brake disc. So this cable is uh, essentially, it's shot. Poof. This little piece here though, this is an extension that I made because this cable was intended for a Beetle, not for a Type 3. And I think my new cable is exactly the same way, so I'll be using this little piece again. So this must come off of this cable. If the cable broke up high, just behind where the e-brake lever lifts up. So this would ordinarily bolt up here onto the little seesaw 
and then it would lift and this has a little foot underneath it where the cable would wrap around and under so I'm guessing that was our friction point where it chewed the cable up so we're gonna grease the crap out of this little position on the next go around here and the cable that's already in there that's on the other side will do the same thing but yeah that's where it broke and that's not something I've ever seen before but so I guess that's where it is it must have been right about here yeah that seems right so yeah it broke right in the middle of that foot that's where it would be anyway that's what's wrong. In addition to that, I warned everybody, be careful when you pull it out because it's covered in grease. Well, look at all the lines down my arm and the line down the front of my shirt, so I, I failed. <laughs> I did wipe the cable down so it's no longer greasy, but nonetheless, we're going to be putting a new one in. And while we install the new one, we'll slide it in a little bit at a time and grease it as we slide it in. We're not going to grease up the whole thing first because what it's going to do is it's going to whip around. It's going to get all over chassis. It's going to get in the dirt and pick dirt up. It's just a total chaotic mess. So we're not going to do new it that cable. way. Here's the part number. Links down below in the video description. You guys can order one for yourself if you follow the links. I think they give me 50 cents or something. And of course, this cable only applies if you have disc brakes. I expected to be able to break into this thing, but it looks like while the Chinese are selling those junk cables that break in only two years, they sell those wrappers that are really hard to open. So whatever it's worth. Yep, there it is. Just verifying here that we have the correct cable. It does appear to be the same length, so we are good. I believe the other one is either four inches longer or four inches shorter than this one. I can't recall which. And when I said that this cable was actually too too short for the Type 3, what I actually meant was the jacket was too short because I actually need a little bit length of pipe to get this thing to properly stretch out to where it goes on the chassis. So I've experienced that before also on other Beetles. So I, I don't know, maybe I have the short cable and I need a longer one. I don't understand exactly why it doesn't fit properly and I've never tried the other cable. I just know that this one works. So this is the one that I use. And of course, here's my little piece of pipe. Pipe. I'll slide that over so it goes on the end there. But first we gotta get this cable greased up. And as I said, I'm gonna grease it as I put it in, but as part of the cable, we do need to grease first, and that's the lower half, because you won't be able to get to it later. So we'll slide this up, and expose the bottom, and then little by little, we'll slide it up to the end, and then we'll push it in the chassis and grease up the other end. Right, the lower half of this that's in the jacket is currently greased, so anything that's beyond this point is still dry. Now, I have seen people install these cables dry, but I would not recommend that. These things do wear. They are in motion when you use them. And, of course, they are prone to rusting, too. So you might as well just get it coated with grease. Don't expect the grease that's in the tube to, to uh, protect it from future. So just, yeah, just, just grease it properly, guys. Just, I've seen people just not and just don't want to listen. Oh, it'll be fine. And yeah, I'm sure it is. But then again, you know what? I greased mine, and I got three years out of it. Gee, thanks. The cable's got to go back into that hole right where is it can I see it the camera's doing stupid shit on the screen instead of zooming in there it is right there it's got to go into that hole there it is it's directly above the IRS pivot that's where we're going to be shoving the cable into of course first greasing it and getting it in place remember I installed this IRS rear end in here that's why it has no rust it is dirty though but there's no rust in anything because I completely de-rusted it and painted it, treated it with uh, acid. And well, this is really the first time I've been back under here since I did all that work. And you know what? I'm looking at my, one of my IRS pivot bolts there and it looks like that guy might have come loose. I better check that. Yeah. Looks like it's sticking out a little bit for. Alright, we're going to lube up the first foot or so of this cable. And be careful when you slide your fingers up and down a cable greasing it like this because if there is one little frayed wire, your flesh will find it. And you'll be swearing and cursing and screaming the blues and ask me how I know. Jumping up and down, screaming and stuff. My dad used to call it the asshole of a cable. And he told me it was an old Navy term. So if you were in the Navy, let's say, well, I guess it was Vietnam era for him, um, and you've heard the term before, comment down below. I'm curious. This thing going in? No. <laughs> it's impossible for me to get my hand way up in there. There it goes. All right. Now we gotta continue greasing this cable as we shove it in. And the cable routes around the shock this way. 
back around that way. I always keep a rag nearby for wiping. People that work with me usually can't understand why my hands are cleaner than theirs and because I just keep wiping. So you keep getting the grease off, you got nothing for the dirt to stick to. All right, here's the other end of our cable. This needs to go through the little hole on the back side of the brake caliper here, just like that. Push it in. There it goes. Get our cable routed around. And then that little clip that we pulled off before, this guy, a little sir clip, has to go back on. And yeah, you could use a set of pliers or something, but like I said earlier in the video, this thing usually goes on and off pretty easily, and it's on. Then, you push the spring forward. Well, you try to anyway. <laughs> the spring's gotta go forward and the little ball that's on the end here has to go in the hook. All right, what I think I'll do. There it goes. Why does it feel like it's binding? Binding is not good. Binding is not good at all. Yeah, it's not happy in there for some reason. Let's pull that clip back off. Let's give it a little more freedom. All right, now it has freedom. Everything just sat like it's supposed to. Now let's push this back in and put the clip back on it. I've done that both ways before with the clip on and clip off. It never seemed to matter, but this time, this time it matters. No. Put our clip back on there, missed. All right, and we're not binding anymore. Now you gotta pull this back just a few inches. I'd say about three, four inches. It's about four and a half inches is my fifth width. Fifth width, I sound like Mike Tyson. It's the width of my fifth. <laughs> so about that much. And there's a reason for that because when we go in the car, we're gonna fish the um, cable out of the chassis. It has to be back a little bit. If it goes way past the hole, then you have to pull it out, which means you gotta clip onto it and you're gonna bend it and you might put a kink in it and well you just generally have a bad day because it it's not good to the condition of the cable all right we're good all right let's get up front and pull it out of the chassis this right here is one thing that i have um absolutely no respect for volkswagen for these these things are just they're, they're crap it's absolute crap they're just a pain in the ass to work with typically i'd pull the uh heater levers up and the e-brake lever up and then i'd pull it up I'll roll it like a condom. You've got that off of there. You should be able to work around it. I can't get mine completely off because I have a plastic handle on here and that didn't want to come off at all, so that's just the way it's going to be. At least until I have to replace the next boot, then I'll find a way to get it off of there. But looking down inside the chassis, hey, down in there. Now I can see it a minute ago. Yeah, my eyes can see it, but the camera can't, looking through the screen. But right in that slot, right in there, you can see the silver of the cable poking through. Yeah, actually, that angle gets it a little bit. But right there is our cable poking through. Hard to focus on it, but that little wormy-looking thing, it's near the center of the screen. That's it. So we got to fish that out of the chassis. You can do it with a pair of needle nose pliers. You can do it with a flathead screwdriver if you're careful. You can also pull it up with just uh, like a hook or a piece of string, a few different ways. But again, we have it pulled backwards in the rear on purpose so that way the cable is not extending itself way into the chassis so that way you can't actually get the tip of it pulled up and out. 
otherwise it's uh it's pretty easy to get it out of there so anyway i'm gonna snag it i'm gonna put the camera down this is one of those times i'm just not gonna hold the camera and uh, we'll pull it up and out otherwise this is the balance beam here and the other cable so these are ready to go i just got to pull the cable through the hole that's on the other side of it that hole there stretch it over the top of this the little dick on the top here is broken off which is very typical on the later model Volkswagens, but it doesn't seem to matter as long as you keep the cable snug, everything should still work. It's probably one of the reasons why I had no e-brake at all, because I think if the dick is still there, the e-brake still will kinda work on one side, kinda. So anyway, next time I get around to pulling this handle out, I'll uh, drill this out and then put a proper insert inside of it, something hardened steel that won't break off so easily. Anyway, yep, right, there, it there it is, sticking on up. I use what dad would call his uh, ball hook because you can snag your balls with it. Anyway, yep, it's out. Be careful that when you get to this point, you don't accidentally um, knock it back in the hole. <laughs> and yes, you could have actually taken the e-brake lever out completely and exposed this hole and made it a whole lot easier to get in there. But pulling these little pins off on an old rusted Volkswagen, you see these are rusty, that's not an easy task, and it can be real hump to get these out of there. And then the next thing you know, you're removing the seats to get to it, and yeah, it becomes just a, a gigantic can of worms. So anyway, the cable is now accessible, where I could just grab it with some pliers here. Pull it on up. There it is. Now I gotta go check the other end of the cable and make sure that it sat where it's supposed to. Just dropped it under there. It didn't go back in the hole, but it went under the lever. <laughs> there it is. It does look a little short, so uh, probably what's going on is either this one has stretched or the other cable is just not where it needs to go. So anyway, I'll pull it up a little bit and make sure it's right. And then we have to take the nuts off the old cable here, the part that broke, and uh, save them because they're going back on this. For some reason, these new cables don't come with nuts, and I don't think they ever have either. And it's just the way it goes. All right, everything looks perfect under here. I don't see anything hung up at all. So that tells me this cable was just manufactured a little bit short. But also, as I start to tighten it up, it'll start to stretch and things will settle. And when stuff gets settled and where it belongs, that's when we're going to notice that the thing's going to come up higher anyway. So I guarantee you, it's going to move position. Pull the little balance beam up and over the top of the e-brake lever. And then we have our other cable here, which is going to be going through this hole. And we have two nuts that came off the old cable. One of them has a beveled edge on it. That beveled edge has to go down first. Then the flat nut goes on second. Now again, I'll do this with the camera put down. <laughs> but I'll give you one mention of warning if you do try to attempt this work. And that is, same as on date night, try not to drop your nuts down in a trench. And uh, that's what happens here. You, they drop down inside of here. I mean, you might get lucky fishing them out with a magnet. You might not. Ask me how I know. Nonetheless, be really careful with them that they don't end up down in there. We got the first nut on there, not the second. I'm not gonna put the second one on just yet until we get this thing adjusted, I'm gonna snug it up. But to adjust the brake cable, you just simply either tighten or loosen. This one I'm gonna leave it alone because this one was in a correct position before. This balance beam will make them somewhat equally be pulled on. So if one's a little too tight, then essentially you can compensate for it on the other side. It might seem weird, but yes, with the balance beam, usually just make sure that it's straight across and we get three clicks before it starts to bite. One, two, three. Let's try that again. I don't think we're down all the way. One, two, three. It's starting to bite at four. So it needs to be snugged up just a little bit more. And we're talking only a couple of turns on this nut. Once we get it to the three clicks, one, two, three clicks, and it's good, and then it should be properly adjusted. Now, the Volkswagen manual tells you to pull it up two clicks and then spin the wheels, and the wheels should spin freely. On the third click, it should start biting. Well, that's kind of the situation here, except I have a feel for it myself. So anyway, that's how it works. So let's get this snugged up, let's get this thing done, and uh, let's make sure everything works. That's the way it worked out. The balance beam is not level. This cable on this side is, is a different brand or different manufacturer. I mean, it's from 1996. When I first bought my rear disc brake set, that cable came with it. This one I replaced, uh, well, three years ago because I screwed it up by accidentally putting a nick in it. Anyway, the cables are probably not exactly the same length. That's fine. This is just the way everything's gonna work out. So it looks okay. We should be all right. In fact, it just leveled out by doing that. But what you're looking for is you're looking for that three clicks, like I said, until it grabs. And I got one, two, and it grabs just as I'm clicking in the three. One, two, three, that's grabbing right there. And there's the click. One, two, and three, yep. So it's adjusted well. 
it's going to stretch a little bit and it's going to break in so of course it's going to come off of the location that it's at we'll take it for a ride just make sure that the rear brakes aren't dragging for any reason at all but i think it's going to be okay all right well here we go let's put that wheel back on and we got to fix this boot these are annoying man these are so hard to get back on oh lousy design i'm just yeah i do not like those rubber boots they suck <laughs> all right and our wheel goes back on that's correct boys and girls <clears throat> Torque it down for us. <laughs> Torque these to 80 foot pounds. 80. I'm somebody that actually does torque down my lug nuts because they came off of this car once. Is. One hubcap. All right, let's go for a ride. Boy, these hard toed shoes are nice. Look at that. No pain. <laughs> Couldn't do that with my dress shoes that I usually wear. Before I burn up all the daylight, let's get an opportunity to talk about the big elephant in the room. As you guys have been seeing this in the background of this video, and I'm sure a lot of you have already commented, hey, you know, what about that bus in the background? <laughs> Before waiting to this section of the video where I'm actually talking about it. Now, this is a 1974 tin top bay window bus, and it has a nice interior somebody put in there. It does run and drive. It's got some rust issues. Some of the stuff in the floor has been fixed already. See, there's some stuff like over there that needs to be patched up and repaired. So I might get on some of that. It has a Type 4 engine in the back. I should like to look at it. There it is. It's missing a seal all the way around it. It also has a Weber progressive carburetor on it, which is a big no-no for these engines because this manifold has no preheat. And what? Boomer. Boomer. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> the manifold has no preheat on it. What that means is that the uh, the cold manifold will cause the fuel to condense and puddle up inside the manifold and cause the engine to run all kinds of weird. So Weber progressives were never really meant to go on here. If you have a preheated manifold and you adjust the thing properly, you probably get it run fine. But no, otherwise I wouldn't recommend it on here. But anyway, this thing is uh, popping and banging and uh, does all kinds of stuff when it's under power. So it needs some love. It is currently registered. Bumper coming off. I think it's due to some rust. It has some issues underneath there. A very common rust spot on the bay window bus. These things usually get rusty too. Sometimes they even fall off. <laughs> A little rust in some places. Otherwise, the bed area is pretty good. I think there was a pinhole or two in the back there, which means there's probably bigger holes. But uh, otherwise, this thing is, is altogether solid. Somebody put a uh, bamboo headliner in there. I guess that's bamboo, that grass straw, thatch it, whatever the hell kind of crap that is. All right. This side. Here we go. Yes, the seat is missing because the seat is in the back right there. So that will go back up in here. Had to go through everything. The brakes seem like it's working okay. I haven't checked all the lights yet. But it needs a lot of... A lot of love, a lot of small things. Just needs to be gone through. And you'll be seeing updates on this coming up in the coming weeks. And some of you are probably saying, hey Duckman, when do you find the priorities to work on this stuff? You know, if you could just work on Eleanor sitting there in the garage once in a while. And I said, well, you know, I would, but I can't. I gotta listen to the driveway. Well, you know, get all that out of the driveway. Aha, you just figured out the priorities. <laughs> 
So anyway, yeah, this stuff needs to move or at least be at a, a point I can stick a pin in it, which means this body needs to go up on here and this chassis needs to be driven somewhere in the back. So I just need to get it up and out of the way. I don't want to try working on it in the back because you can roll stuff on the driveway a whole lot better, guys. I think it just makes a lot more sense. So that's the progress that's happening over here. A lot of little things going on. There might even be another square back coming over this way, maybe even two. I got a lot of things that are lining up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you guys are going to have a lot of videos for a lot of things coming up. I'm going to be a really, really busy boy over here getting things done. Oh, yes. Anyway, here's Ruby. It seems like the bus might be in the way, but actually I've been backing out diagonally and going down the neighbor's driveway. <laughs> I don't know. I just need to find my keys. We can take her for a ride and make sure the e-brake is good. I'll just go down the street, you know, about 20 miles an hour and just pull it up and make sure it leaves two skid marks. If it does, it's fine. There we are. <laughs> Doesn't feel like the e-brake is dragging at all. We'll get up to speed here, and then we'll pull on it and see if it pulls to one side. Nope, stop it straight. success. Yeah, my skid mark should be on the road over here. Oh, you can't see him anyway. <laughs> There's nothing to see. <laughs> nothing to see at all. Alright. I guess I'll try it on some dirt then, right? <laughs> and we're going to make our skid marks right here in the side yard. That should be enough to get it. Let's go have a look. Fortunately, the sun escaped us, but uh, there's a better look at our skid marks. Got the one right here, and then there's the other one right there. So, yes, the e-brake is working, and as I said in the video, no, I didn't have to do that. I'm just a dick and wanted to show it off, because how else do I show that they're even? <laughs> All right, well, good to go. Fastback is drivable again, or I should say parkable. I don't have to worry about it getting away on me on the hill. My driveway is mighty steep, but task, I got to move this thing and this thing because there's one more thing coming, and you'll see that at the end of the video.
sec. Well, I told you we had something else. I got my fastback painted. Yeah. I sent it off to have a lot of quick body work done on it, so she's ready for a quick flip. No, I'm just kidding. She's right there. But <laughs> we're going to talk about more of this in a future video. This is a 1974 also, if I'm not mistaken here. You know what? Let's check the VIN number there on the dashboard. Oh, we got it. Oh, it's not there. It's not there. Okay. Huh. Well, it's not there. Well, okay. That's a discovery. I have to put that on the little checklist. Well, this belongs to uh, an acquaintance of Wild Bill's. And uh, it needs a couple of adjustments here and there. And I'm going to take care of a few things on it and send it on its merry way. So we'll talk about more of that coming up in the very, very near future. Everybody, thanks for watching. Licky, like, it, comment, and subscribe. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And if you'd like to email me, DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net or DuckShit.net, you can find my contact link up on the page. And maybe that guy will send me a contact. Thanks for watching.